Hello there, welcome to The Smart Student. My name is Chelsea Seaburn. Welcome to my little corner of the internet where I do my best to try and make the lives of online college students just a little easier. Today's video is gonna be all about DOIs and URLs how to find them and when to include them in your APA reference list. Now, if you're looking for the full video on the APA reference list tutorial or any other APA reference list formatting tutorials, there's links to those videos in the description below. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive in, but make sure you stick around until the end of the video because I'm gonna be giving you my three best sources that's gonna make your life so much easier when citing APA references. All right, so first, what are URLs and DOIs? Well, they are the source locators for online content, which makes them the last component in an APA reference. A quick note that I'd like to make about what's different from APA 6th edition versus 7th edition is that you no longer need to include the words retrieved from or accessed from before you include either a URL or DOI. Because the hyperlink will take you directly to the source, this is now considered redundant. But starting with this first one that you see here, which is a DOI, in DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier. Basically, a DOI is a numerical stable link that helps readers identify the source. You can see here by what I mean when I say it's numerical, a DOI will always start with the number 10, followed by a period, followed by this numerical link. Not every online source will have a DOI. They are most common with academic sources like academic journal articles, reports, dissertations, thesis papers, maybe government reports. But let's go ahead and pull up this example so you can see where the DOI is located on the article. Most DOI numbers are usually going to be located somewhere in the top portion of an online article, just like you see it is here. Now, the reason that DOIs are considered stable links is because once they're assigned those numbers, those numbers will not change. So think of it like a security number for an online source. And because DOIs do not change, they're stable, as a rule of thumb, if your online source has a DOI number, you will want to include that over a URL. But if there is no DOI available, then you would use a URL. And URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator, and it is just your standard web address for a digital source. And to find the URL for a source, you would simply come up here to the navigation bar, highlight the full text in which you could copy, and paste it into your document. Great, the one thing to remember with a URL is that they can change. If a document is updated or edited, or sometimes websites move to entirely new locations, this is gonna change the URL. And because of this, that is why DOIs are preferred over URLs. If you're using a URL, always, always, always check the link to make sure that it works and it will take the reader to the right location. And that brings me to a common question that I get from students, which is, should I leave my hyperlinks live in my reference list? And the answer to that is yes. If you're citing an online source, go ahead and leave the hyperlink live so the reader can easily access the source. All right, so out of my three favorite tools, I'm gonna to start with the tool that I think is the most important, which is crossref.org. Crossref.org is a database that was created to make researching easier, which makes referencing easier. Personally, I think the most useful tool from crossref.org is to search for missing elements from academic resources, like searching for a DOI number when it's not included on an article. So for example, I'm just going to get rid of this here, Let's say this journal article didn't include its DOI number. What I would do is I would take something like the title of the journal article, I'm gonna copy it and paste it into metadata here on crossref.org, search for it, and here we go. It's going to give you a list of articles based on the information that you put into the search feature. As you can see here, the first one listed is the article that I'm trying to cite. It's the same thing. So what I would do is I would go ahead and just copy this DOI number, paste it into my document, and there we go. My reference would be complete for this resource. I always suggest checking with crossref.org first if your academic resource doesn't have a DOI number before you just use the URL because it's common to have an academic resource where the DOI number either isn't listed or it just may not be listed in the most convenient place on the actual article. Cool. 
The last two tools I'm gonna to give you guys are link shorteners because under APA 7th edition, it is acceptable to use a link shortener if you have an abnormally long link, such as we do here in the second example here. This applies to both DOI links and URL links, but there are two different sites you can use, so that's why there's two different tools. I have them listed right here. For DOIs, you're gonna to wanna to use this first website here, which is Short DOI Service. And for URLs, the one that I prefer is this one here, which is just a free URL shortener. Now they both work the same, so I'm only gonna demonstrate one for you. And we're gonna go ahead and do the URL because as you can see here, it's long, it takes up a lot of space, it's not really nice to look at, so we're just gonna clean it up. So what you would do, simply copy, paste it into the free URL shortener just like this. And voila, look at how much nicer this is. Go ahead and copy it from here, paste it into your document, make sure it's a hyperlink, we want it live because it's a website, and there you go. It's a big difference from the way it looked before. As always, make sure this link works before you call it good. So I'm simply gonna just click on it just as I did before. I'm gonna make sure that yes, this is the article I'm referencing here. Great, this reference list entry is completed. Fairly simple, right? My pro tip for you in this video is that these three resources I gave you, I would go ahead and create a folder on your bookmarks bar and go ahead and bookmark them here so anytime you need to reference one of them, you remember what they are and they're in an easy location where you could go ahead and just go to the website. It's as simple as this. Bookmarks bar, I'm looking for crossref.org, there it is. Boom, super simple, which is how we like things here on The Smart Student, am I right? Anyways, if you're still here right now, thank you so much for sticking it through. I know this is one of the more mundane topics that I've covered on my channel, but it's useful, so I hope you found it helpful. But as always, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe for more videos like this every week if you're not already subscribed. Thanks, guys. Stay smart.